Last night we heard a rare account of the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum theft from the director of the museum. Today marks 25 years since it happened, and to this day it remains the biggest art theft in American history. And as you know, the paintings have still not been recovered. The museum's head of security is Anthony Amore. He recently spoke with WGBH arts editor Jared Bowen. The Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum's security director, Anthony Amore, is never far from his work or the missing ones. In my wallet, I keep a, um, a reminder for myself, along with pictures of my children, but it's an actual size replica of the uh, Rembrandt self-portrait etching that was stolen in 1990, and it always reminds me there's a job that uh, remains to be done. Amore joined the museum 15 years after what remains the biggest art heist in American history. Consumed with the theft, the one-time Homeland Security agent wears his intensity on his sleeve. You are obsessed. Sure. Why? I think it's impossible not to be. Most of what Amore knows about the case and ongoing investigation he cannot share. But he says the museum receives 8 to 10 tips weekly. He speaks with the FBI daily and every lead is pursued. Uh, I'll use a football analogy. It's like being in the red zone. You know, you march down the field all the way to the uh, opponents, basically their goal line. But get, driving that ball home is where it gets even more difficult. Two years ago, the FBI announced it knew the identity of the thieves. While a surprise revelation, it failed to bring back the art. But Amore says the tips it generated did prove helpful. Since the press conference, the ones that have come in have been more, um, I'd say, direct or targeted towards what we uh, are looking for. Like many, Amore fully expects the stolen art to return one day. Until then, he says, it gnaws at him. How does it manifest itself in you? I have to parse my words because I don't want people to think I'm crazy, but I, will, I often will go into the, the galleries uh, at night and sit there in the dark and picture what it was like the night the theft happened. It's a constant reminder to me that there's a job to be done. We're going to get them back and we haven't forgotten them. Jared Bowen, WGBH News. Joining me now with his take on the quarter century old mystery is Steve Kirkshin. Steve is a three time Pulitzer Prize winner at the Globe and author of a terrific book, Master Thieves, the Boston Gangsters, who pulled off the world's greatest art heist. It is great to see you, Steve. Thank you for having Can me. Can we start almost at the end? We had this discussion the other day. Mm -hmm. Five million dollar reward, statute of limitations is run. Right. Law enforcement says they won't prosecute for possession of stolen right. goods. Why haven't people just turned in the stuff and taken the five mil? The easy answer is because those who know exactly where it's buried are dead. And the people around them are not people who want to upset the apple cart. They don't, they don't tell stories out of school. They don't call the authorities. So there's got to be an, a way of appealing to these people to get them to give their essential information to the feds. Has this lasted a quarter of a century because law enforcement blew it? No. Not at all. Why is it, it taking so yeah, long to get it's nowhere? Be, it's because how do you get information out of people? The, very few people know, knew exactly where it was buried. And those people around them who did know something are not inclined to pick up the phone and talk to authorities. But you also say that the FBI was not exactly into a sharing kind no, of No, that's the FBI. Mood. It, it, well, but that's part of the deal. They were in charge of this for at some point, it, weren't they? And they had 45 agents on the streets of Boston. I'm not here to defend the FBI and how they did it. Especially but, in New England, yeah, yes. Uh, but they, they're very precious with their, uh, with their information. They don't want to share it with other law enforcement because they don't know where the information goes. So they held it in closely, thinking that it would very quickly be solved. Yeah, a couple of years ago, the FBI said they knew who had done this thing. A Globe editorial yesterday, the day before, in the last few days said, release the information. Right, right. Why don't they? I, I, I think one of the reasons is because there's so much uh, hearsay, secondhand information, rumors, uh, paybacking going on in those files that they probably don't want. They all, the entire, it would take some, uh, some excerpting out of, uh, of that kind of information to get the FBI to release whatever You've made another suggestion in the pages of the Globe, uh, talking about how there really hasn't been a sense of urgency, I'm putting words in your mouth, no, so by leaders in this community. Right. What's the antidote for what, what are you suggesting? Well, the way I see it is these people who know the precious pieces of information, clues as to the whereabouts, and that's all we're looking for. We're not looking to put in jail somebody who may have it or may know something about where it has it or who did it. And, You've got to appeal to them somewhere. There's better angels, their sides of their, of their personality. And I think it's the Mayor Walsh's, it's the Cardinal O'Malley's, and Eureka. It's the David Ortiz's and Tom Brady's. Get those 
in front of those frames, those empty frames, that are a testament to this loss, and say to appeal to Boston, we need this back for our commonwealth. We need, these, uh, we need this artwork back. Everybody who's pursued this off and on for 25 years has a theory. It's an art lover. It's an insider. You have a different... Why are yeah. they wrong? Uh, because of the way this material, this artwork was taken. These were, you know, these, these were thugs. The way they cut uh, Rembrandt's out not of frames. Not representing art lovers. There's not. If I had commissioned these works and they brought back uh, art that was cut out of frames, I'm not paying these guys. So Pierce Brosnan, Pierce Brosnan is not involved here. It is the thugs of Boston who, who had a quick and easy score because the museum security at that point was so derelict. They found a way of getting it, and then they figure out what they wanted to do with it. My sense is what the, the exact reason why was because they wanted to get somebody out of jail. Somebody it was a negotiation. Who, it's a negotiation. Get out of jail free card, which they believe it's a total myth. No one's getting out of jail because they're going to bring back the artwork. Okay, so the FBI two years ago said they knew who did it. Uh, you say you know who did it. Anthony Amore, don't you? <laughs> well, you, you're well, pretty I close. Am, I am pretty close to... Okay, to, and Anthony yeah. Amore, the head yeah, of security, says he two, knows who yeah, did it. Yeah. So do the three heads uh, agree on the same... They, Anthony, has not, Anthony and the FBI has not shared with me the, their information as to who, who exactly did so it. So give us a little bit of a lead of where you think these... What, what's going on? Well, going back to the idea that it was a get-out-of-jail-free card, that an individual who's a head of one of the Boston's gangs that were, were, were at war at that point, he was visited by a second-in-command and said, we're going to get you out of jail. We're going to get something that the FBI and the authorities will reason with us to get you out of jail. He said to them, don't do it. It's one of the final chapters. Don't do it. No one's getting me out of jail. And it wasn't. And my sense is they did it. They hid it because the heat was on so much. And they suffered a dastardly fate. They're in a violent business. They do drug gangs. They do armored car robberies. They're... they're they're, they're, they're shooting, they're, they're, they're talking with their guns, and they, they paid the ultimate price. We only have 30 seconds left. You're one of the best investigative reporters alive. You're not Nostradamus, but I'm going to ask you to play them. Are we going to get these back, and yes. when? We're going to get them back. Uh, hopefully with, you know, with someone to pick up the phone, call Anthony Amore, call Jeff Kelly of the FBI, call Steve Kirkchen, his name is around, uh, and we'll get them back. But they'll come back because they trust the, that these belong back. This is our commonwealth, and they, and they belong back on the... And by the way, your motivation of time is about the art, not just about the kind of work you've done. Yeah, exactly. Yours, which thank is beautiful. you. Yeah, Steve, thank it's great to see you. Thank you very much. Wonderful book. I hope you'll read it. Thanks so much.